Okay, this is May 12th for the final distance learning packet. Um, so we, we finished up with two-way tables, and we are doing some practice with rational and irrational numbers. So again, this is going to be review. We've done this um, just practicing converting between fractions and decimals and remembering that some of these have some patterns that we looked at, and um, you kind of just need to remember them. Um, there are ways of, of converting if you forget. Um, this is for converting repeating decimals. But um, I'm not going to get into that. Just, you know, the basics, the normal fractions into decimals and then terminating decimals into fractions. So the first section is fractions to decimals. So how do we do that? Well, remember, a fraction is just vertical division. So all we have to do is divide, all right? If you have a calculator, you can do it really quickly. If you don't, then we can do it by hand. So um, I'm gonna choose one, I'm not gonna do them all. Just choose one, let's start with number two. So it's one divided by eight. Okay, so the tendency is to switch those numbers around and then we'll get eight, but one eighth does not equal eight at all. Um, this is going to need some zeros, so I'm just going to put a few there. And 8 goes into 1, 0 times. 8 goes into 10, 1 time. Okay, we subtract. We get 2, bring down that other 0. 8 goes into 20, 2 times. And that's 16. We subtract. That's 4, bring down that other 0. 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times, so that's nice. And we get 0. All right, so our answer is 0 0.125. And we're not rounding or anything. So if it is, if it does come out to a repeating number, then we just put a line over the top. Okay, so there's that one. Um, what about number six? Okay, so negative number, it's a, it's a mixed fraction. So what do we do? Um, you might want to convert this into... Um, uh, a single fraction, but you really don't need to because that whole number is going to be the part that's in front of the decimal place. So that's negative three point and then something. The something is this here. So nine twentieths. So we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, so nine divided by 20. 20 goes into nine, zero times. 20 goes into 90. 4 times, so 4 times 20, that's 80. Okay, we subtract, we get 10, bring down the 0, and then we get this, comes out even, or comes out exactly 5 times. Okay, another way to think of it is, if the denominator, if we can see that it's easy enough to make it into a 10 or a 100, or a thousand, then that might be a quicker way. So 20, we can multiply by five to make it 100. So we're gonna write an equivalent fraction. So multiply by five in the numerator, nine times five is 45. So 45 hundreds, which is exactly what we got when we divided. Okay, so that's, that's that one. Um, so let's use this kind of idea right here. Instead of dividing every time, let's look at number five. We can write an equivalent fraction first with 100 in the denominator. So 50 times 2 is 100. So if we multiply the numerator by 2, we get 42. And then 42 hundredths is 0 0.42. And that's it. All right. Now, decimals into fractions. So we have to go the opposite way. So when we have a, a, um, a decimal that is ending like these, it doesn't repeat or anything like that, then it's really quick. So kind of like this idea for number five. So look at that last part. So here's a decimal, 0.42, and the fraction equivalent was 42 over 100. Okay, so 0.9 would be nine over, okay, what, what place is it in? It's not in the hundreds place, it's in the tenths place, so nine tenths, nine over 10. Then simplify it if we can, but we can't, so that's it. 
Um, let's try number four. It's kind of like number six above. So first of all, it's going to be a mixed number. So negative two and 35. It's in the hundreds place, 35 over 100. Okay, and then again, we want to simplify if we can. Um, I know I can divide um, 35 and 100 by 5. So if I divide by 5, I get 7 over 20. So I'm going to rewrite this. So negative 2 and 7 twentieths. And then that's it. Um, number 6, we have a repeating decimal. So this is one that we... We looked at some patterns. We did this in our interactive notebooks. But if we forgot, the pattern for a single digit repeating over and over, that was ninths. So this is 4 and 8. We take that number that's repeating, and that is over 9. And that goes for if we had 4.1 repeating, it would be 4 and 1 ninth. Okay, if you don't believe it, you can try it, right? So let's take 8 and divide it in by 9 and see if we get 0.8 repeating. So 8, we think it's 8 9. So 8 divided by 9, and it's 0.8 repeating. And this calculator is just rounding because it's only going to show so many digits. So that 8 just keeps going, and that's exactly what we started with. So 8 over 9 is correct. So that's it. Okay. Um, here we have some practice. Let's take a look at the first one. It says the pull of gravity on the surface of Mars is 0.38 that of Earth. Write 0.38 as a fraction, then write two equivalent fractions. So it really is the same thing that we have been doing. It's just there's some a bunch of words around those numbers. So it's the same, same thing. Okay, so all we have to do is write 0.38 as a fraction. So looking at what we did on the previous page, it's kind of like number four. So how do we handle that 0.35? It, it became 35, 35 over 100. So let's do that. So 38 over 100. And then write two equivalent fractions. Okay, so let's divide this by two. Each of those numbers, we're going to divide by two. So I'm going to get, what are we get at the top? 19 over 50. Okay, so there's one equivalent fraction. Um, we can't simplify that anymore. So the process of simplifying is the same thing as writing equivalent fractions. So that's, that's it for that one. But let's look at what if we took the original fraction... And instead of dividing by 2, what if we just multiplied by 2? And let's see what we get. So this is all the equivalent fractions. So 38 times 2, okay, 76 over 100 times 2 is 200. So these are all the equivalent fractions. So what does that mean? That means they all equal the same number. So let's just try it. So 0 0.38 is what we need. So let's make sure that our other two equivalent fractions are, are okay. I'm confident that 38 over 100 is right, but let's try 19 over 50. So 19 divided by 50 is 0.38. Okay, that's good. Now the last one is 76 over 200. So 76 divided by 200. 0.38. Okay, it works. All of these are correct. So that's it. That's all we're doing. They give you the, the um, decimal or the ratio, and then you have to convert it. So the second one is very, very similar to the first, and then the last two are ratios. So maybe let's take a look at number four. It says, recently a small college had an enrollment of 1,342 students and a total of 215 faculty. What was the student-faculty ratio for this college? Write your answer as both a mixed number. Oh, that's a hint that tells us it's going to be greater than one. And a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. All right. So the order is important. Student, faculty. So student goes on top. 1342 over 215. Okay, so we can divide by hand. We can 
um, see if we can simplify this using equivalent fractions, or, I mean, let's just use a calculator. So 1342 divided by 215. 1342 divided by 215. Okay, so before I hit equals, let's think about what we expect that to be. What is it going to be close to? So let's use our estimation skill. Let's just do this. So what would that be? If we simplified that, that would be about, well, that would be 6, right? So our answer should be something close to 6. So let's see if we're right. Right, 6.2418. 6.24. And what does it say? Round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so 2, 4. And then it's a 1, so we're going to leave it at 4. So 6.24. And that's it. Okay, so that's good. So we rounded it and we wrote it as a decimal, but now we need to write it as a mixed number. Okay, so the 6 is the whole number. And then 0.24, okay, that's going back to what we did on the previous page, so 24 over 100. And then we're going to simplify that fraction. So 24 over 100, I know I can divide it by 2 because they're both even, so let's do that. So 12 over 50, okay, they're both even. So let's divide by 2 again, so 6 over 25. We could have divided by 4 from the beginning, but if you didn't, that's fine. 6 over 25, that's good. So 6 and 6 25ths. So what does this mean? It means that for each faculty member, there are 6 students. That's great. Just think about your classes. A class of 40 kids and one teacher. So think about if it was this ratio, it would be 6 students and one teacher. That's quite a bit different. All right, so that's it for day 12.